That's right, with so much Sega love on my channel in the past, I thought it's only fair that I check out the, uh, finally check out the good old Nintendo NES. One of the uh, classics from the 80s that uh, rose from the ashes like a phoenix uh, from the crash of 1983 and restored everyone's faith uh, back into video gaming after Atari and uh, Color Collision and everyone's ever uh, helped make it turn into a big downfall. It's a great time, especially for Nintendo and also for video games. And there you have it, the good old Nintendo Entertainment System with its uh, revolu revolutionary D-pads, its uh, slide in from the front cart interface. It's uh, a sight to behold, but don't get too excited fans, because what we're going to do, instead of looking at the old generic Nintendo that everyone's done on YouTube and everyone's going, eh, boring, we're going to look at the original Japanese Nintendo, or the Nintendo Family Computer. Family Computer Tojo. In Japan was the Family Computer, or Famicom for short. Um, basically, they sort of tried to instill the name computer as, um, as opposed to a video game system to uh, lure, lure the market back again. As I said earlier, the, uh, the market was a little bit, um, a little bit apprehensive of video games, so they called it the family computer. Now, this is practically the same as your Nintendo NES system. Um, as I said, it's just the Japanese counterpart and what they played over there as opposed to our dull grey box so fun. All packaging aside, you've, um, this one's even actually got its uh, original warranty booklets and instruction manuals and whatnot. Telling us about all the uh, fantastic delights that is the uh, Super, not the Super Fang, oh, the Famicom. <laughs> But here she is, um, Nintendo Family Computer. One thing you'll notice is that the controls are quite handily move, or actually can be um, shelved in the size, actually sort of lock in there. Uh, very similar design to the Nintendo NES controller with the, as I said, revolutionary D-pad start, select uh, A and B buttons. Um, cords, they're actually hardwired into the back of the console, which is, um, and this, the leads are uh, obnoxiously short, which is a bit of a downfall, but um, apart from that, look, it still does all the same things, which is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, moving around to the front, um, basically you've got your card eject button there, your dust cover there where your carts pop into, and um, yeah, very happy to have this machine. Uh, guys, if, you, if you're looking for something uh, uber cool with Nintendo, do yourself a favour and pick up a Famicom. Second controller, what you might notice is that you've got a mic input there. Um, I'd say it'd be similar to what you had uh, with your the mic you had in the original DS. Now, basically, the only game I'm aware of that actually utilises this mic um, is the first Zelda game, where one of the enemies is sensitive to sound. Um, Google it, guys. I'm, I'm not much of a Zelda fan, but I know that um, that much about that sort of particular uh, thing. So, yeah, apparently, if you screamed into it or yelled out something obnoxious in Japanese, the uh, the enemies would uh, maybe be stunned. Who knows? Uh, but that's basically it for the, the the family computer. Now, this did have a crap load of add-ons, which I'll get uh, onto a little bit later on. Um, but first of all, we'll look at the difference in carts as well from the um, the rest of the world and what they look like. Sadly enough, the rest of the world world had the uh, classic drab looking grey Nintendo cards that we've come to know and love. But what did they have over in Japan? What they had in Japan was a freaking colourful plethora of cards. Um, <laughs> I said gone is the gr drab grey and a uh, welcome multicolour. Now they're a lot smaller as well. Uh, we'll do a bit of a size comparison here. You've got uh, Super Mario Brothers, and you've got that standing right next to your Castlevania. So it is a more compact car, um, does all the same things, um, but yeah, more compact. That's Japan for you. Nintendo brought in in the early stages to uh, sell uh, their Nintendo sets. Uh, they had, I think, you had the action set, and I think they had the uh, the one with the robot as well. Now that wasn't any different in Japan either. So we had the old uh, family computer robot, or as it's known in the states or everywhere else in the world, good old Rob or robotic operating buddy, which would uh, help you along in your gameplay. Uh, bit of a gimmick. I think there was only two games released, which I think was Stack Up and Gyromite. Um, but yeah. <laughs> It's um, pretty, pretty, as Nintendo's always been innovative for doing weird shit. Um, they've got the motion controls with the Wii, they had the Virtual Boy, and they brought this freaking thing out, so um, 
good on them for having a crack. It was certainly something different. I remember as a kid, I was just like, man, that'd be freaking awesome to play with Nintendo with a robot. Um, but when you actually do get a chance to play with one of these, it's not that exciting, so... <laughs> uh, but still, nonetheless, it's still a good collection piece to have. Now, along with Rob as well, we had the uh, good old... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm wearing this. Nintendo Power Glove. Um, it was made by a different company, I think it was... Oh, I can't remember, in Japan, it's something, a different name for it. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of my trolls will uh, correct me later on, but um, that was also available in Japan. A little slightly different colour scheme as well. Um, but still pretty much as useless as the Western version. Now also one of the things Nintendo had for the Famicom was the Famicom Disk System. I actually, sadly enough, don't have one, but um, there's a pick right there if you want to have a look at that one. Nice. I hope to get you off eBay or perhaps from somewhere soon. Uh, basically what this allowed you to do, the games were actually on little discs um, and it would allow you to save games as well um, before they had the battery backup. So they had little discs like this. Um, this is a copy of Sunsun for the Famicom Disk System as you can see on the little label right there. But um, yeah, Nintendo Disk, pop it into the system and away you go. Loading times will be a little bit slower. Um, <laughs> but it did give you the opportunity to save games and whatnot, so that was fantastic and um, a good one of the another innovations by Nintendo at such an early date. And what is this abomination I've just strapped to the top of my Famicom? Basically this is the Fam oh, Famicom Network System. Basically what this entitled you to was you'd be able to plug in or uh, get offline or from a network so to speak, you'd be able to get like a bit of uh, access. I think of it like the, um, was it the Nintendo Satellaview uh, I think we had over in the west as well. Um, basically, it enabled you to sort of go in onto a server of sorts, uh, get some cheats, uh, codes and whatnot um, as well. I think they had um, like little mini games you can actually download for the discs. And don't quote me on that, I'm pretty, not very cluey with this particular add-on though, it's a little bit rare, so it's, um, but for its time to actually um, to get onto a, a modem or get online for, for in the 80s, um, it was just freaking unheard of, so. Great, great little addition to the old, the old Famicom. And um, if you can find one of these, they're definitely worth picking up because they're, they're worth a pretty penny at the moment. Um, but yeah, so look at this, a slew of, sort of different accessories you can plug into this as, um, as I said earlier, um, you've got the, the power glove, you've got the disc system, also you had um, the family basic where you had, um, um, you could basically, I think you could uh, program in BASIC as well, and you had a keyboard. Um, 3D glasses, they were one of the first ones to do the 3D glasses, along with the uh, the guys over at Sega with the uh, 3D glasses there too, and they had a couple of different games for that, so you can pick those ones up as well. So there is a shitload of stuff for the Famicom, and it, man, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so what we'll do now is we'll check out a couple of the games. Um, as I said before, most of the games are all pretty similar. There's a few unique, oh, quite a few unique Japanese titles on the system. So, what we'll do is we'll have a couple, look at a couple of those, and um, as well as a few faves, and we'll go from there. But man, all this Nintendo is making me freaking thirsty. Mm. Mm. Scotch, delivered by Power Glove. Awesome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
there we have it guys hope you enjoyed the video and hope you learned something along the way if you have any comments or questions obviously post down below remember to subscribe as always um, and I hope to bring you another video very very shortly so got a few interesting ideas in the works so um, by all means um, tune in subscribe and um, keep the show going thank you very much and we'll see you next time won't we Rob yes <laughs> lame joke